Winter is coming, which means lots of sleepy days inside, not much exercise for Henry. But he needs to be ready for mousing season in the spring. So since this is the armory, we're going to use a robot arm and some AI to make sure to keep Henry here in peak physical condition. The arm for this project is Ned from Nereo, which is a six axis collaborative arm that's dramatically cheaper than most of the arms I usually work with. And that's because it's meant for education. So there's a lot of tooling in here that's built specifically for learning. So there's already a Python API, there's Ross running inside of it, which we'll be using. There's even a language called Blockly in there, which lets you program by just connecting different blocks together. So it's really good for people who don't know code or young users that wanna get into robotics. So if you're looking for a robot to kind of learn and get started, but you don't wanna use a simulation like Ross, then you can definitely look at something like this. This arm also comes with a conveyor belt, a gripper, a vision system, and digital I.O. built into it. So it's super flexible and easy to really get started. It is a fairly low payload arm, which kind of limits into what applications you can get into. But again, if you're just looking to learn, you don't really need that high payload. You can also do a lot of stuff like painting or anything with lasers or spraying or inspection, anything that doesn't put a ton of force on the arm, you could do all of that with this arm. For this project, we're gonna start with Ned and we're gonna add a laser pointer. Hopefully I can use a laser diode that I can control with the IO, but you never know. Then we're gonna add a Z2 from Stereo Labs, which is a stereo camera so that we can find Henry. And so we can control all of it and process the stereo data, we're gonna use a Jetson AGX. I bought a pack of these little laser diodes off of Amazon. Focus. So that the arm could actually control them using the IO and turn it on and off whenever it needed to. The problem is that these lasers were not nearly bright enough. They took me a little bit to end up just giving up on it and I ended up falling back just on a plain old laser pointer. This was a lot brighter and it's not as ideal, but I can just tape down the button. I definitely prefer if the arm could control it whenever Henry was around, but didn't really have time for that. Now that the laser is attached, we need a way for it to actually find Henry. So to do that, we're gonna use a Z2 stereo camera from Stereolab. This has two individual high def cameras that are recording at the same time. Each one of those is getting a slightly different picture of the world around it. The computer can find differences between the two images and use that to actually calculate the distance to specific objects. It can do this for all of the overlapping pixels between the two images. And using that, it can create what's called a depth map. A depth map is a black and white image where the pixel values are actual measurement depths away from a single camera. Once you've calculated the depth map and you have the image coming in from the actual cameras, you can combine those together to create a point cloud of the world around the robot. I 3D printed a small mount for the Z that fits under the foot of the Ned. Using the Z, I have a 3D map of the world in front of the robot, but I need it to be able to find Henry specifically in that. To be able to find Henry, we're gonna use a convolutional neural network. The first thing we have to do though is train that network. So I recorded a quick video of me just playing with Henry with a laser pointer. I pulled out individual frames and I'm uploading them to RoboFlow. I'm using RoboFlow to automatically split the data into training and validation sets, but also using its built-in augmentation tool. Augmentation will take the images that you already have and create new versions with slight differences, like different exposure or adding noise. So it's basically a free way to get more data for training your network. I manually go through each one and draw a box around Henry. Once Henry is marked in all of the images and the images have all been augmented to create even more data from the data set that I have, then it's actually onto training. With all of the augmented data that RoboFlow created, 
there's almost 1700 images that the network is using for training. To do the training, I'm gonna use the Jetson AGX that I already have. The AGX is more than powerful enough to do the training, but it's also very low power and fairly quiet, so it's easy to run at home. Once the network has been trained, anytime you feed it in an image, it can do a really solid job of picking Henry out. One of the camera streams is fed through the neural network and that will pick out Henry. Henry's location is found in the depth map so that there's an actual measurement to the location where Henry is in front of the arm. Once the arm knows where Henry is, it has to figure out where to put the laser pointer. I don't want the arm to shine the laser pointer directly at Henry because I don't really want to blind him. So what I'm doing is having the laser always kept a certain radius away from Henry. That makes it so that he has to move to get it, so it has him running around, but it also protects him a bit. Then, to make it so it doesn't just run him straight into a wall, I'm changing the position where the laser is on that circle. So if Henry were to sit perfectly still, the laser would basically just circle around him at a constant distance. The next step is arm control, and this we're just going to be using Ross and move it. Luckily, because Ned is made to be educational, it comes with Ross and Move It already set up on it. I made some minor changes to include the laser pointer and the stereo camera, but a lot of this already came out of the box working, which makes my job so much easier. Henry's all tuckered out from a busy day of testing, so I guess that means that he likes it. As usual, all the code for this will be on GitHub and linked down in the description if you're interested. Also, a lot of these projects have kind of been put to the back burner, and that's just because I'm busy doing other consulting stuff, but I'd love to be able to spend more time on them. So consider supporting us on Patreon, or at least subscribing to the channel. That goes a long way to making it so I can spend more time making videos and try to release stuff more regularly. Robots are awesome. Thanks for watching. See you next time.